King of the Wind, the story of the Godolphin Arabian by Margaret Henry, illustrated by Wesley Dennis. Chapter 1. The Fast of Ramadan. In the northwestern slice of Africa, known as Morocco, a horse boy stood with a broom in his hand in the vast courtyard of the royal stable of Sultan. He was waiting for the dust to fall. All day long, he had eaten nothing. He had not even tasted the jujubes tucked under his turban, nor the enormous purple grapes that spilled over the palace walls into the stable yard. He had tried not to sniff the rich, warm fragrance of ripening pomegranates, for this was the sacred month of Ramadan, when day after day all faithful Mohammedans neither ate or drank from the dawn before sunrise until the moment after sunset, the boy Agba had not minded had not minded the fast for himself. It was part of the religion. But when Senior Achman, chief of the grooms, commanded the horses to observe the fast, Agba's dark eyes smoldered with anger. It is the order of Sultan, the signaler had announced to the horse boy. He had cuffed Agba on the head when the boy sh- showed his disapproval. Of the 12,000 horses in the sultan's stables, Agba had charge of ten. He fed and watered them and polished their coats and cleaned their stalls. Best of all, he wheeled the whole string into the courtyard at one time for their exercise. There was one of the ten horses to whom Agba had lost his heart. She was a bay mare, as fleet as gazelle with eyes that stunned him in whatever he did. The other nine horses he would lead out to the common water throng through to drink. But for his bright bay, he would fill a water cask for a pure spring beyond the palace gates. Then he would hold it while the mare sucked the water. Her eyelashes brushed his fingers as she drank. For long moments after she had drink her fill. She would gaze at him while the cool water dribbled from her muzzle onto the, his hands. It was the mare who worried Agba now as he worked to fill in the time until the hour of sunset. The courtyard was ready. Swept clean by Agba, pushed his palm leaf broom as if he were sweeping all his thoughts onto a little mound from the wind to carry around. At last, he hung his broom on an iron hook alongside the endless row of brooms brooms, and went to the mare. Her stall door was closed so the fragrance of late clover would not drift into her prick appetite. He found her asleep lying on the side. Her great belly descended by the little colt soon to be born. Agba noticed with a heavy feel in her chest, the fast was telling that the fast was telling on the mare. He could read it in the spunken places above her catch eye, in the harness of her coat, but soon the fast would be over. It was the last day of the month, and even now the sun was sh- sinking below the gray green olive trees that fringed the courtyard. There was no sound to anywhere, not from the palace walls beyond, nor from the quarters over the stables where the horse boy lived. The whole world seemed to be holding its breath, waiting for dusk to fall. Small voices of insects and birds were beginning to pierce the quiet. Twilight toads piping on their bassoons, crickets chirping, wood doves cooing, doves cooing, and afar off the Atlas Mountains. I, a hyena began to laugh. These were forerunners of the darkness. It would be only a short time now. Agba turned toward the east, his eyes on the mare of the mosque. It had a sharp needle pricking the blood red reflection of the sun. He gazed fix, fixly at it until the eyes smart. Eyes smarted. At last, a figure in White robes emerged from the tower. It was the small public crier. He 
was sounding his trumpet. He was crying four times to the four winds of heaven. The fast of Ramadan w- was at an end. The wind air went wild. The noise. Twelve thousand horses recognized the summons and neighed their hunger. The royal stable seemed seethed like an ant hill. Horse boys swarmed out of the corridors and into the courtyard. From the hoods of their dark clothes, from waistbands and vests, they took they took dates and raisins and almonds and popped them nosily into their mouths. They stripped the grapes from the vines. Then they ate the bardistrous abandon. Some plunged their faces it and threw and sucked the water as if there were horses. Agba did not join the, the other horse boys. He turned to the mare, moving slowly so as not to frighten her. He reached under the saddle hung on the wall and found the water vessel he had filled and hidden there an hour ago. He poured the water onto the basin and waited for the mare to awake. Waited for the mare to awake. As if she had heard in her dreams the sound made by the water, she woke up in a jerk and struggled to her feet. She came to Agba and drank. Then she raised her head, letting the water slobber from her lips. Agba waited motionless, knowing she would want more and more.